you've been thinking, well, this is some kind of fluke. There are 38 states, 38 states that have a separate, more lenient uh, standard in the law for medical neglect for children with regard to so-called faith healing. But it's not faith healing. It's faith harming, and it's sometimes faith killing. And it's very dangerous, and hundreds of children have died, and thousands upon thousands of children have suffered horrible agonies as a result of this. Now, I have given you just two examples, but there are many examples in many areas of law in my book, Attack of the Theocrats, whether it's policy in the United States military, whether it's health care, whether it's reproductive life, or reproductive health, whether it's end-of-life care, a whole range of policy issues where there is privileging of religion in law that harms real people, things that we need to address. And you've heard the question, many people have heard the question if they're secular, how can you be moral if you're atheist? How can you be moral if you're secular? Well, I don't think that's a fair question to ask anyone as a category of person, but I do think it's fair to ask people who are religious, will you join us in speaking out against these laws because it is these laws that are immoral? And in my book, I offer a modest plan to take over the United States. Are you with me? <laughs> we need to change this country, and we need to organize around doing so. And I am going to offer you a ten-point vision of what a secular America looks like, of an America that returns to the values of Jefferson and Madison. Ten principles. Number one, our military shall serve and include all Americans, religious and non-religious, with no hint of bias and with no hint of fundamentalist extremism coloring our military decisions at home or abroad. <laughs> Stephen Hill, who got booed at that Tea Party Republican debate. We respect all of our troops. There are men and women who served in the military here. Let's give them a round of applause. federal or state-funded program, whether offering services, domestic or foreign, that relates to sexual decisions shall be based on science and public health, not on religious bias or the denigration of women or sexual minorities. We will stand up for that. <laughs> Healthcare professionals shall fulfill their professional duties without a hint of religious bias, and that includes fundamentalist pharmacists who turn away rape victims with the imprimatur of law as they did in Arizona. We will protect anyone who needs their health care, and if those health care providers don't meet their duties, they shall have to find another job. regarding religion and land use planning or environmental laws as there are now or discrimination in employment based on religion in some areas as there is now. We will end that. Number five, while marriage can be defined as any religion so chooses within their congregations, the government definition of marriage shall have no bias in it, period.
Congress shall include secular Americans and there shall be no prejudice against secular candidates for public office. In my book, I talk about people who are already there, like Mr. Sam Torum, who's been in Congress. Do we prefer him? Or will we prefer Bill Gates, who does good works and happens to be a secular American? Do you want the fundamentalist 50 that's already there that I refer to about in my book? Or would you rather have Brad Pitt, who goes down to New Orleans and helps everybody? You have Senator Rand Paul, who gave a speech at the convention of the Constitution Party. The Constitution Party, where he gave the speech, their principle is that we should be ruled by biblical law. Well, he's there now, but I think we ought to run for Senate. Kentucky's own George Clooney, a secular American. Abraham Lincoln, whose law partner said he died an unbeliever. Let's have our first name. Thank you, There should be one consistent end pertaining to the health and welfare of children, no matter the religion of a child's parents, school, or child care center. Religious extremists can do whatever they want with their own bodies, but children shall be treated as human beings, not as pawns to be sacrificed in the name of religion. We will protect these children. technical and scientific innovation shall be dedicated to the health and advancement of our fellow citizens. We can do things with stem cell research to help with Parkinson's. <laughs> about the theocrats in my book, I'm not talking about abstractions. I'm talking in my book about you, about you getting involved. I joked earlier about the Creation Museum in Kentucky, but really it is a lie to young people. It is an injustice to the people of this country. And now they're expanding, as many of you know, with this so-called Ark Encounter, which gives it a $40 million tax cut here from the state of Kentucky. All your state commissioner of education has announced that they're gonna be cutting for public schools. Think of the contrast. Get active and help us change this. Because what we need to worry about in this country is not the angry atheist, that's a myth. What we need to be ready to address is the fanatical fundamentalist. We need to overcome the fanatical fundamentalist, and we will do so with the affable atheist. <laughs> I tell you something for sure. There's not much I can add to the resume of Richard Dawkins, but it is amazing to me because here's a man whose reputation is in science, is assured for generations to come. He will be famous and revered decades and decades from now because of his scientific brilliance. And yet, as a politician, I watched this guy on what we call the rubber chicken circuit. He decided to help lead a social movement and to take on this great second journey in his life when he doesn't really need to. He could stay home back in Britain and rest on his laurels, and instead, he is working, traveling, sitting in rental cars, in strange hotels and motels, so that he can help us change the world. And I am asking every single one of you, as Director of Strategy and Policy for the Richard Dawkins Foundation, to get involved with our organization, to get involved in changing the world, because he has done something that is really a great inspiration. Throughout his life, and in particular with this book, the examples I began with. Remember little Emile White, the two-year-old girl who died from that hand. Remember Jessica Crank, who died from that horrible, hideous, needless tumor. Those are just representative cases of many cases of injustice. Contrast that with Richard Dawkins. And in his book, Magic of the Reality, Magic of Reality, he talks to young people with respect and treats them as human beings who are intelligent, who can gain information on their own and make their own decisions. Now that is the way to treat young people. It is my great honor to work for Richard Dawkins. 
and I hope that you will all take some of your time to work for Richard Dawkins as well. I now want to introduce uh, Professor Emeritus Dorothy Sutton, who will now introduce Richard Dawkins.